Our program today is uh, highlights from lead group 33, or excuse me, 30. And uh, we have uh, Aaron Raymond. Uh, he's originally from Bart, uh, Brainerd, Nebraska. Currently he lives here in Lincoln. He is uh, with Farm Credit here in town. And Jamie ba Bauman, uh, originally from Martell, Nebraska. And she is a microbiologist with uh, UNL. So I'll turn the program over to them. January 10th and after uh, about 10 hour flight we got it there on a very full plane. Um, you can see the start here and work our way down towards Cork, up here to Northern Ireland, over into Scotland and then finish down in London over 15 days. A little bit of terminology for everybody so we wanted to make sure we were over there that we didn't offend anybody by saying the wrong place but there's obviously Ireland um, right here, and then Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom with Scotland and England and Wales. Um, then all of that together is called the British Isles. Also in there is Great Britain, which would be Scotland, England, and Wales. And thank you. Okay, so our first trip was to Ireland, and we landed in Dublin. So as you can see, this picture right here starts off very well, um, the remnants of what they call the Celtic Tiger, with the half-finished buildings and construction that's happening everywhere. Ireland um, had a huge um, construction boom, and they call it the boom time, real estate, and then it plummeted and fell, and they are currently rebuilding from that right now. Uh, we went to the embassy in Dublin where we learned a lot about um, the financial gains they're making and have actually cut the equivalent of $2 trillion um, from their budget. So they're working very hard. It's a very big pride thing for them to um, regain their independence from the union. We went to the Orchard Center, which was our first farm visit of the weekend. And this is um, Joe Hayden right up here. And they're a dairy, a pretty large dairy for Ireland and is also the flagship dairy for Bailey's Irish Creek, which most of us know here. Uh, <laughs> they had about 120 cows and 300 acres, which like I said, is pretty large. Um, very heavily subsidized. I think they receive a 65,000 euro a year, or $87,000 a year in subsidies. Government controls much of what they do through regulation. Um, here's a picture of some of the cows. They have a high, of uh, dairy cows, they have a high replacement rate of about 40%. They have a very short breeding time, and so if um, a cow remains open, they usually call her right away and don't take several months, you know, don't give them multiple chances. And you'll take over talking about host families. Uh, after that, we, uh, we stayed with several of our host families um, in Ireland, um, which was absolutely fascinating. We enjoyed uh, meeting with the families. Um, it was quite an event. They brought many of their, uh, this is the uh, home that uh, we stayed in, they brought many of their uh, cousins and relatives in to meet us while we were there. It was pretty interesting. Uh, we actually stayed down the hill in that little cottage on the bottom uh, where we stayed. And then after that we traveled to Cork. Um, there's just, uh, obviously Ireland's a beautiful, beautiful country. I took quite a few uh, scenic shots. Um, it was uh, gorgeous to view. We also uh, stopped and toured the Jameson Distillery. Um, in Ireland they don't have a lot of branded products, so what they do have they're very proud of. Um, Jameson is an example of that. Um, they take great pride in the Irish style of making whiskey, which is supposed to be a lot more smooth. Um, we learned the difference is how they malt the barley. Uh, in Ireland, it's, it's malted with, uh, uh, with a low smoke coal and versus Scottish, which is made with, uh, it's malted with peat, which gives a very smoky flavor. Um, after that, we went to Cork. Um, Cork is in the southern part of Ireland, a very busy city, uh, port city. 
And uh, after that, we toured the O'Leary Dairy. Um, Tim O'Leary was the owner of this one. Um, if you're looking at it, it wouldn't, it's, it's very open. All the dairies in most of Ireland are very open. Um, there's not a lot of con confinement. Um, everything is, everywhere we went, the biggest benefit in agriculture to Ireland is the grass. It's their cheapest cost of gain. It, uh, they have a grazing season generally. They try and turn out by the 1st of February and try and get through the end of November. It's a very long grazing season and uh, it's, it's what they focus on. Uh, this is Tim O'Leary and his son off to the right, um, giving us a tour of their tour of their operation. Uh, the milking parlor, again, it's all open. It's right off the loafing barn. You can see off to the left. Um, I think they call it a double herringbone. Um, they bring in on both sides and you milk, uh, milk down the aisle. Um, I'm not a dairy expert, but I've been to a few. It's not very often you see them fully open like this here in the U.S. Uh, the equipment is probably, probably not that much different than you would see, see elsewhere. Um, there's not a lot of, they do feed them through about December through January, so there's not a lot of need for larger equipment for feeding any livestock. Um, off to the bottom to the right, if you can see it, there's uh, all the pastures are rotationally grazed. There's a couple hot wires there. Uh, it's predominantly rye grass variety. It's all cool season. Um, the average temperature in Ireland is usually year round between 30 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a very, very temperate environment um, with significant rainfalls, usually it varied where we were at, typically between 26 to like 32 inches. So they got a significant amount of rain. Uh, so obviously cool season grass varieties are very well. All right, so um, we also, besides seeing all the farm and the ag, we got to do um, some tourist activities as well, visited the Blarney Castle. Um, <coughs> there's some of our lead fellows here with us. Uh, the Blarney Castle uh, is known for it, the Blarney Stone, which is the stone of eloquence, which gives you the gift of the gab if you kissed it. I don't know if you guys know me and Aaron very well. I don't really know that we needed help with the gift of gab, but we ventured on anyway. So this is the, that was the stairwell that we went up. Um, there's the body stone right there that we're kissing and you can see how clean it looks, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's a cleaning solution there, there, but right there, there that we, did, we didn't see used. They never used it. <laughs> it was, I think, some 200 stairs that we climbed up in a very narrow, um, stairwell that we went up, but it was pretty awesome. Once you got to the top, it could see the countryside from um, up top. Uh, we also visited the Rock of Cashel, uh, which was, the, most of the buildings you see here were built in the 11th and 12th century. Um, it was owned by pagans, Catholics, Protestants, royalty, so a little bit of everyone um, has been through there. But Erin, um, if you go to the next one, you can see um, the inside of the church here and the stonework was very detailed. It's kind of worn away over time. And they're currently doing quite a bit of restoration there right now because of the water um, that has absorbed into stone over time. And here's some from the inside um, and then the outside. You can see the tall towers here. These are very important um, to Ireland. There was around 150 at one time and now there's only a handful left. But they're um, at most castles and ministries. Here's Aaron showcasing off the beautiful scenery in the background. And then you can see why that location was chosen because you have a very good view of the countryside that they could see, you know, back a long time ago, the battles that could have been approaching. It was fascinating to see. We see abandoned farmsteads here all the time and don't think much of it. And we'd be driving down the roads or along the interstate in Ireland and you'd see ruins of a castle just someplace off in the distance. It was kind of unique. They didn't think much of it. But it was Fascinating. And also, you know, we I think all of us grasped by the end of our time there that we're all very proud of our hundred year old farmsteads here. You know, and think that, you know, it's really old. But over there, I mean, there's things that are, you know, thousand years old and people have walked down the same path for centuries, so it's pretty neat. Um, we went then ended up back in Dublin and this is at Trinity College, the Book of Kells, which has the first four books of the New Testament. Um, it has, I wish you, we could show you pictures of the Book of Kells. They wouldn't let us take pictures, but the detail and the artwork and, and it was just phenomenal. It was um, made in 800, so it tells you how old it is and how well they preserved it over time. There's also just hundreds of other books and historic artifacts for us to look at while we were there. Uh, this is the um, bridge that goes over the Liffey River, which separates North and South I or Dublin. Um, it was built on a, in Australia, came up on a barge. If you can tell, it's the shape of a harp, which is kind of the iconic instrument of, of Ireland. 
And we got to do a panoramic view of Dublin while we were there, which is kind of where some of these um, pictures have come from. But this, uh, this is a Georgian door, um, which are very popular there, the old style buildings. And that was the most photographed door in Ireland, or in Dublin. <laughs> but also the Brazen Head, the oldest um, pub in Ireland. And there we got to experience some traditional Irish folk music. After that, we went up into Northern Ireland. Um, and on the way, we stopped at a John Deere dealership. Um, honestly, walking inside, it really didn't look any different than a John Deere dealership you would see here. Um, the bigger differences is probably just the equipment size. Um, in Ireland, the average farm is 80 acres, uh, which is pretty pretty small for by our standards. But uh, obviously, you're not going to see a lot of huge, huge implements. Um, one thing we found kind of interesting is off to the right, they, uh, for every year, they uh, kept track of every tractor they had sold and put the individual's, the buyer's name next to it. I can't imagine, uh, one, there's not too many sales, but also I can't imagine too many guys would want too many individuals to know how many tractors they bought or which ones they did. Um, tractors are almost like vehicles in a lot of Ireland and Northern Ireland. They just travel down the road just like everybody, any other car. Notice the, uh, the license plate up on the, on the top corner. And many times you'll look at these tractors and their tires are just completely bald. Um, as we went to the shop, um, what's, uh, there's obviously no corn grown for silage um, at these, at these, the growing season is too cool. But uh, so instead, when they do, uh, when they do chop silage, they chop grass. Um, and what you're looking at is a repair shop. Obviously, they've got a couple choppers in there, but the number one selling uh, chopper salesman, I can't remember if it was in Ireland or all the UK, sold I think three choppers. Um, that year. So there obviously is not a lot of, of uh, equipment sold. Obviously if you own a farm of 80 acres, you're probably not going to own a two, three hundred thousand dollar machine. So almost all that work is custom done. They call them contractors, we call them custom hire. Uh, but uh, almost all of those choppers are owned by, by contractors. Uh, we stayed in Belfast for a day. Um, that's the Peace Wall. Um, I'm probably a little young a lot of this was before my time, but obviously with the conflict between the Catholics and the Protestants, um, I for the you know, it's not in the news much anymore. We don't hear of the IRA bombings like we once did. Um, I had thought for the most part that it had more or less uh, calmed down and simmered down, but uh, we probably learned when we were there, there's still quite a bit of tension underneath the surface. Um, here's just some shots of the Peace Wall. Obviously, they, uh, depending on whatever political affiliations or whatever issues may be important to people, obviously are painted on on the uh, peace wall, um, right here it goes right through the it goes right through uh, Belfast, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, divides the Catholic and the Protestant sides of town. Right where that car is driving through, the gates are still shut every night. They've done this for decades. Um, Note the razor wire on top, and in other places, if they go right through residential neighborhoods, and there's tall corrugated steel going up sometimes two, three, four stories, and that's to keep people from chucking stuff at each other. Um, and it's just it's just amazing that this was. Right, uh, still happening, tension is still there right around us. Uh, that's the Europa Hotel. I'm told that's one of the most bombed hotels, for sure, in the UK. It might even be in the world. Uh, and even, and, you know, it's, it's even funny, even the taxis are segregated. Um, these were a couple taxis that only stayed on the, the northern, northern Belfast side or southern. Yeah. They, some are yellow or have yellow insignia on them, others are just all black. And uh, if you wanted to go from Northern Ireland to, sorry, Northern Belfast to Southern, you would have to change taxis 